Hello, my name is DJ Eclipse, and today we're going to talk about DJ Controllers 101. So there are a lot of different options in DJ controllers, but today we're gonna to narrow it down to three different ones that kind of give you an example of what to look for. We're gonna look at the Hercules DJ Control Impulse 200. We're gonna look at the Pioneer DDJ SB3, and we're also gonna look at the Denon Prime 4. Every DJ controller will have a certain set of functions that are consistent throughout the range. And that is your crossfader, your volume levels, your pitch controls, your master level, and your headphone cue. Next, you'll have your EQ section, and then in some cases, you'll have effects or a filter. Now, depending on what type of controller you have, you'll notice there's a different size in platters. So if you're more just a play and go type of person, then these smaller platters won't matter that much to you because you're just gonna be using it for like back cueing and just setting up your records. If you're gonna be in more of a turntablism scratch type of mode, you're gonna to wanna to look at some of the bigger platters like the Pioneer or the Prime 4 or any other device. Another common function of DJ controllers is gonna be your gain knob because sometimes you're gonna get tracks that are gonna vary in level. So in order to set a basic unity gain, you're gonna to wanna to adjust that gain level to get those levels to where you want. So when you crossfade from one song to the other, your volume level is gonna be consistent. Another common function of DJ controllers is gonna be your hot cue assignments and maybe your other sampler effects roles type situations. Your hot cues is gonna be for when you load up a track, Usually your first one is going to be the beginning of the track and then you can set other cue points throughout your records. Say you want to just bypass the whole entire part and get to like the hook or maybe a breakdown or an outro. That's what you'll use the cue points for. When you get to the roll sampler function, then these buttons will all become things that trigger beat jumps, loops and other things. Now, this is where things get a little bit different. Depending on the type of controller you have, now you go into different options. One of those things will be outputs. So in this case of the Hercules, all you have is the RCA out. So this is gonna be what you plug directly into your speakers. When you get to other controllers, then you'll have other routing options. So you'll have an output option for your speakers, and then you'll have another one for maybe a DJ booth output or to an alternate set of speakers or to a recording device. And that all depends on what controller you decide to work best for you. Another important function of DJ controllers is the headphone cue output. That will give you the ability to listen to one song while another one is playing. In that access, you will be able to pick whatever one you want to cue in your headphones while the other one's playing in your track. You also sometimes will have the option to be able to hear what's coming out through the speakers and your headphone cue at the same time. But that depends on what model you'd like to work with. Another important function of DJ controllers is the ability to scroll through your tracks and then select them and depending on which deck you want to go to. And that's where your browser and your selection functions and your load buttons come in. So what you do with the browse button is basically you use these to scroll through your tracks or your crates or your playlists throughout your DJ software. And then each deck will have a load button that you can push to then load that track onto whatever deck that you want to cue it to. Now, when you get to the more advanced DJ controllers, that's when you get a lot of extra functionality like multiple channels, multiple routing outputs, multiple effects, the ability to transition from one DJ to another with multiple USBs, and a host of many other features. When you get into the larger controllers, another feature that is really popular is the ability to switch what channel handles what output. So that could be for another uh, external CD player, it could be for a turntable, it could be to a Bluetooth device, drum machines, or any other type of thing you'd like to add to your DJ set. The other thing you'll want to consider when looking at a DJ controller is the application of what you're going to use the controller for. So certain functions aren't going to matter if you're just DJing at home. Some functions are really going to matter when you're DJing a club or a venue or a wedding or any other type of function. And then there's some features that will be essential if you're DJing bigger venues such as concerts, festivals, amphitheaters, and other things like that. So if you're a DJ just starting out, trying to feel your way around, getting used to the workflow, then the Hercules would be a great fit. Also, if you're trying to go into more of a live stream setup, you need multiple routing options, or maybe you even want to get to a little bit of turntablism, then you might want to consider something like the Pioneer. If you've really got your DJ chops in a row and you really want to expand your palette, and you might have the option of switching multiple DJs, you need booth outputs, or other things like that, then you're really gonna to wanna to look at something like the Prime 4. 
Now, these are not the only three controllers on the market. There's tons of controllers out there that have different software options, different routing options, different effects options, and it all depends on what works best for you and your musical workflow. Now, if you really wanna take your DJ set to different levels, then this is where you're really gonna to wanna to pay attention to your routing options. So if you wanna add drum machines, external synths, uh, maybe a different computer, add your DAW, then you really wanna pay attention to the routing flexibility of that. If you're more into a turntablist or beat juggling type style of DJing, you're really gonna to wanna to pay attention to the crossfader because some crossfaders are static, some of them are adjustable, some are reversible. What reversible is, is that that way, when you push the crossfader this way, you'll be activating the opposite channel of what it's routed for. So two will become one and one will become two. In more advanced DJ controllers, you'll even have the ability to adjust the slope of your volume transitions. So you could either do a slow slope or it could be an immediate slope. It all depends on your style of DJing and what works best for you. Now, when you're looking at DJ platters, these are kind of important depending on your style of DJing as we stated earlier. If you're not really doing a lot of heavy back cueing, a lot of scratching, a lot of serious mixing or beat juggling that much, then smaller platters are gonna work fine for you. If you need more of a touch sensitive, really responsive with more kind of a vibe of a turntable or a CDJ, then you're gonna to wanna to look at some of the bigger platters. And also sometimes there'll be information in the middle of those platters that give you additional information to help you better make judgments during your set. Another feature you may wanna consider is your mic input. That's gonna depend on if you're a talking DJ or not. Some controllers won't have it, some controllers will. And that's all depending upon you. Another important feature in looking for in DJ controllers will be the sound card itself. Some of these will have really basic sound card functions and some of them will be more advanced with higher processing, better A to D conversion, and other things like that, which is really going to enhance your audio experience. But if you're in an environment where that really doesn't matter, then that's not that big of a deal. But if you're looking to take your DJing to the next level, really getting onto the club stage and bigger venues, you're really gonna wanna consider that when you're making a choice in DJ controllers. All that's to say that the controller that works best for you is the one that works for you. I know it's really tempting nowadays to look at other people's controllers and really dissect if that's really considered pro or not, but really it's all about you. What fits your workflow, what fits your musical style, and what will help you get the job done. Yes, in some cases, there will be controllers that you probably should not take to certain environments, but at the end of the day, the real DJ comes down to the music selection, your interaction with the crowd, and the overall vibe you bring into your set. And whatever one of these controllers helps you achieve that goal is the right one. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about DJ controllers or any other products, please call your Sweetwater sales engineer or visit the website at sweetwater.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this and start at sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.